Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming pattern as well as the fact that June might come to a little bit of a cold start to begin things off. So we're going to talk about all of that within this video. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know if you had to predict one kind of bold prediction for June, what would it be? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video, the most interesting one. Now let's get started with this video and we're going to be looking at the temperature pattern by time we're looking at about 8 p.m. today and the time I'm making this video is Saturday, May 23rd. And you can see that we're actually dealing with some warmer than normal conditions for a lot of the central and eastern United States with some exceptions like New England uh, and maybe some areas down there for like Texas, Arkansas, Florida, um, just eyeballing a few, but in the West, we're dealing with colder than normal conditions. This is what we call a negative PNA pattern. I'll talk about that at the end of this video. Actually, we're going to get pretty technical to end this video. So I'm very excited to kind of get to an educational topic towards the end of this. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. All right, now let's get on to our next frame. And this is actually going to be by tomorrow afternoon, Sunday, May 24th. And you can see that we're going to still be dealing with generally warmer than normal conditions for a lot of the central and eastern United States, especially if you're a bit inland. You can see a lot of the northeast coast actually dealing with a little bit of colder than normal conditions. But for the most part, warmer than normal for most of the central and eastern United States, like I said before. All right, now we're about to move on to where we're going to start to see that cold moving into the east. Uh, so that's going to be by about Monday afternoon. And as you can see here, this is again by about Monday afternoon, May 25th, and we're dealing with some colder than normal conditions now east of the Rockies, so they're starting to move into a lot of the central United States, like the upper Midwest, the Great Plains, uh, some of the south central United States as well, as well as the southeast dealing with a little bit of colder than normal conditions as well. Basically, the only two areas that I can see that are warmer than normal is the immediate west coast and then also for a lot of areas like the Ohio Valley, some portions of the upper Midwest as well as the Great Lakes and through New England as well, which is weird because they started out below normal as you saw before. Let's go ahead and move it to about Tuesday afternoon and you can see the cold actually starts to move more towards the south, the south central and the southeast dealing with most of the colder than normal conditions by this point. So still by May 26th, we haven't seen the big cool down yet or the big pattern change yet. Uh, the warmer than normal conditions are set up over the west coast, the upper Midwest, some of the northern Rockies as well, and in through again, the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and a lot of the northeast in the New England states are dealing with the most above normal conditions. That's about eight to 16 degrees above average. So to close out May, I have a lot of good news for you guys up there. It is gonna be a lot warmer than what you're typically used to. So it is gonna be nice. That's the best part about all of this is that there is some warmer than normal conditions that are gonna be very, very quickly moving in uh, before we get to the beginning portion of June. So we're about to move on and we're gonna move towards May 27th. We're just gonna get closer and closer to the beginning portion of June. Uh, so it's going to continue to be nice. So I've kind of alluded to it throughout this video, but really I think about June 1st is that pattern change. Uh, if I had to pick a date, we're going to be dealing with the South Central and Southeastern United States, still dealing with colder than normal conditions here by May 27th, as well as the, again, the Western United States, the North Central the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and then also the Northeastern United States. And you might be wondering if this video is actually about the beginning of June, why are you talking about all of this? Well, in the last video I made similar to this where I was talking about a cool down, people were like, where was the warm up? So I'm showing you where the warm up is so we can talk about the cool down uh, just to kind of respond to the people who left comments like that. I want to make sure everybody's aware of what's happening throughout the entire pattern and not just a select chunk of it. So we're going to be talking about all of the end of May as well throughout this video, and we already kind of have. So let's go ahead and move on. That was Wednesday afternoon, May 27th. Let's move towards about Thursday afternoon, May 28th. And you can see it's a similar story, except some of the upper Midwest is starting to cool down as well. Uh, the Northeast is still well above normal. Again, those pink colors dealing with about 12 to maybe even 20 degrees above average Celsius, which is far far above normal. And that actually heads down into a lot of the mid-Atlantic and the northeast as well. The Great Lakes and Ohio Valley still dealing with warmer than normal conditions. So this upcoming week after the weekend is looking beautiful, beautiful weather. Uh, get out there, enjoy it, because again, I've again talked about it throughout this video. I don't know how nice the beginning week of 
or so of June is going to be. So enjoy it and soak it up while it's here. We're about to move on and we're going to move towards May 29th. And that's where things are really going to begin to change. All right, so here we are again at about Friday, May 29th, and you can see the warm-up for the East Coast is coming to an end. We're seeing some yellows and some reds, but the pinks are completely gone. Um, we're starting to see a lot more light blues and even darker blues move into some of the areas that we're dealing with above normal conditions just prior to Friday, May 29th. Also, the West Coast there is dealing with extremely above normal conditions, so that's what we call a classic positive PNA pattern, and that's not what you want for warm in the east. Uh, that's actually what you would want for cold in the east, warm in the west. So we're looking like a lock for a positive PNA uh, throughout the upcoming pattern, it appears. Uh, and again, we're moving pretty far out by this point. This is approaching about a week. So the confidence is moderate, but we do think that there could be some changes to this as time moves forward. That's why I titled this video a uh, cold start to June possible and not there's going to be a cold start to June. I'm thinking that it's very likely at this point, but that does not mean it's for sure going to happen. Let's move towards May 30th and you can see again getting even colder for the east and the west coast as well actually. We do get a little bit of an influx of cold air there for the west coast, the immediate west coast, but still generally the western United States is dealing with some above normal conditions. Let's go ahead and take it to June 1st, and you can see, again, I think this is about a staple date because look at that, colder than normal conditions uh, pretty much throughout the East Coast, the South Central United States, uh, and then by time we move towards June 2nd, which is going to be Tuesday, uh, and this is the afternoon hours, dealing with far below normal conditions here for the Ohio Valley, the Northeast, the New England states, and portions of the Mid-Atlantic as well, far below normal conditions. Uh, but by the time we move towards June 8th, we kind of see some more warm-ups head in. I know we just jumped like a huge uh, chunk there, and this is very, very far out, so the confidence is low at this point, but the model does trend towards things flipping back towards a little bit of warmth being able to make its way in, so it's not all bad news for the beginning of June, but definitely some more cold air is going to make its way uh, into the eastern United States. I think at some point during the first seven days or so of June, uh, it's not going to be you know, overwhelmingly above normal temperatures at this point. That doesn't appear likely. All right, so we're about to move on. And like I said, we're going to move towards a more technical subject. We're going to talk about those oscillations and why this has been happening. You might be wondering, why was the winter so warm and then the spring was so cold? And why won't it just warm up? Why won't summer come? I'm going to answer all of those questions here for the last fourth of this video. So first things first, before I answer those questions, we're going to talk about the upcoming oscillations. Here's that PNA, which stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. And you can see that it is a little bit negative uh, right there, which means we are probably dealing with a little bit of colder than normal conditions for the West Coast. And if you watched the beginning of this video, you would know that that is actually the case. We were dealing with a little bit of colder than normal conditions. Uh, but this goes positive, and it stays positive through the beginning of June. And that means probably warmer than normal conditions for the western United States and below normal conditions for the eastern United States most of the time. Uh, and that appears to be the case. Uh, here's what we call our North Atlantic Oscillation, or NAO. And really, we, if this is positive, this encourages warmer than normal conditions in the eastern United States. And the more negative it goes, the more it encourages colder than normal conditions in the United States. And you can see this one is actually pretty far positive but it's going to trend a little bit more negative as time goes on. It's never going to actually go negative, but it gets closer to neutral, uh, which means it's going to encourage cold as we move forward. And here's the most important one, the Arctic Oscillation. This one's pretty positive right now, but it is actually going to creep negative there, uh, and it's going to trend closer to neutral uh, as we head towards the end of May, beginning of June. And there is a little bit of a lag with this one, so I think that if it's showing it go kind of negative or neutral at about May 30th. We will be feeling that by the time we're at about the 1st, 2nd, 3rd of June. All right. Now, you might be wondering, this is also going to explain what an AO, a negative AO pattern is like and a positive AO pattern is like, but you might be wondering why was the winter so warm and now the spring has been so cold? Well, here's a look at today. And this is a classic negative AO pattern. We have warmer than normal conditions over our Arctic circle there. And then what this causes to happen, we call that a negative AO. 
is it displaces the cold. The cold is forced to go elsewhere, and you can see I've pointed arrows to where all the troughs head, where all of the cold air is pushed. You can see one for Russia there and a second one for Russia actually on the other end. So one for Western Russia, one for Eastern Russia, and then we see one there for the Western Canada and Western United States, and then one for Eastern Canada and the Eastern United States. So four different troughs, uh, four different areas of cold air that are pushed away from the Arctic Circle. And this is why we've been dealing with so much cold air in the Eastern United States, because we've been dealing with a negative AO, warmer than normal conditions over the Arctic Circle, since about the beginning of April. So this has been forcing the cold air for a long time to go elsewhere outside of the Arctic Circle. Now you might be wondering, so what conditions were we dealing with over the entirety of the winter? Well, we were dealing with a positive AO pattern. And this is what a positive AO pattern would look like. This is a, a map I took from March 6th, 2020, just in case you're curious. So we were dealing with these conditions on about March 6th. Uh, warmer than normal conditions, basically, there's a donut around the Arctic Circle of warmer than normal conditions, for the most part, with some few uh, exceptions, uh, and then very cold conditions compared to normal for the Arctic Circle, so even colder than it typically is, and this is the case basically through most of December, all of January, all of February, and most of March as well, so we just saw un unnormal, unusual cold air for the Arctic Circle, much colder than what is typical for a very long time, and it just continues to build up and build up and build up as long as that stays as a positive AO. So you might be wondering, and this is actually going to be the answer, why was it so cold in April and May? Why, why did it feel like winter? Well, because that positive AO finally broke, and it had gotten so cold, so much colder than what is typical, and then it finally unleashed the cold air over the eastern United States when it was too late. It, it unleashed it in like April and May. Uh, when it wasn't enough to create, you know, any major snowstorms, it wasn't winter anymore. But if that would have happened in February or March, it would have been a completely different story uh, for the winter time. And it's only by chance that that didn't occur. So that I hope that answered a lot of questions. Let me know in the comments down below if that answered any of your questions about what happened for the previous winter and the previous spring that's about to come to an end. Let me know. Uh, but I hope that did kind of help some of you understand a little more. Now, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys... Uh, how many hurricanes do you think there will be this Atlantic hurricane season? And Falcon said, I think about nine hurricanes. And I think that's a little much. I think anywhere from seven to 11 hurricanes is my guess, but I think nine is right in the middle. So I like that comment. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.